Alright guys, I hope everyone is good. I want to bring you a 10 minute tactical video series where I look at roles in the game and showcase exactly what they do in a match. To select the player for each role, I'll take the game recommended attributes for the role and filter on the player search tab and then select an appropriate player. As always, if you like this content, then please leave a like to let me know so I can bring you more of these episodes. Also, subscribe and click the notification icon so you don't miss the next video. Alright guys, let's go. So this first video is going to be focused on a deep line forward role. We're going to use Mikel Oyarzabal. Although he is not naturally a striker, his attributes are perfectly suited to play as a deep line forward. He also has the benefit of a professional personality. First, we're going to look at the role description. The deep line forward's main function is to link the attack and the midfield. He aims to drop into space and hold up the ball before supplying linking passes to teammates, moving the ball back to midfield support, spreading it wide to the flanks, and if he has time to turn, playing in his strike partner. With a support duty, the DLF will largely aim to bring teammates into play before attacking the box from deep. With an attack duty, the DLF will look to fashion chances for himself in addition to playing others in. For this match, we had no fancy tactics. It was a straight plug and play with a vertical tiki taka 4-1-4-1 DM wide. We also let the assistant manager handle the team talks. This is to keep the focus on the role of deep line forward. In this first highlight, we can see how the late run into the box by the DLF ties up the defenders here in a six yard box, which causes a 2v1 overload on the right hand side of the pitch and creates a scoring opportunity for Odegaard. This clip shows how the DLF will try to find the pocket of space in front of the central defenders. The encroaching wide player forces the defensive line back with his dribbling, which then creates a space for both the DLF and the right winger. Our next highlight shows the part of the role you're not told, and that is that the DLF will mark the defensive midfielder cutting off the passing angle to him and forces the play out wide. It also shows that the role will track back when the team is on the defensive to cut off passing opportunities and force the opposition backwards. This can really change the game if your opponent has a particularly good deep line playmaker. This highlight again showed the DLF occupying defenders in front of the goal, which allowed space at the far post for Odegaard to head home his second of the game. There were a lot of highlights like this in the game, which really showed how good DLF can indirectly create goal scoring opportunities for the supporting players consistently. Here you can see how much space can be found even when the opposition have a defensive midfielder. Because our forward is behind the defensive midfielder, he stops him from really being able to charge the ball down. This gives the midfielder more time on the ball to pick out a good pass. Unfortunately, this time he didn't. This clip shows two things. First, the DLF finding that space again. And secondly, how dropping off from the central defender gives him an extra yard he needs to shoot. It's half time and it's time to take a look at the analysis. Here we're looking at his average position. 
then his average position with the ball and now his average position without the ball. We can see he's much deeper when we don't have the ball. Now let's compare that to the rest of the squad. As you can see he is still the most advanced player even though we know he is dropping very deep when he doesn't have the ball. This can indicate that our players generally find themselves in more advanced positions or we are attacking as a team more than we are defending. Either way it's a good sign. I'm going to take a look at his touches. The purple pass lines indicate where the ball has, was passed to him from. Typically we can see a lot of his touches were from the right hand side of the pitch. We had a lot of throws here which almost always seemed to be aimed at him. He then did an okay job at holding the ball up before passing it to a teammate. Although he had a low amount of touches in the first half, almost the joint lowest with the goalkeeper. The defensive midfielder seemed to stop him receiving the ball into feet. We could have used the instruction roam from position to give him a little bit more freedom to move around, which I think I definitely would do facing a formation with a defensive midfielder. Finally, let's look at his shots. We know he did score, which is good, but he only had three shots in the first half. I think this is because he was creating space for other players who were in better positions to shoot from. Overall, his support play was excellent and created many goal scoring opportunities. He scored as well, which is great. I don't think we can complain about him not having too many shots though. We're going to let our assistant handle the half time team talk and we're going to change our deep line forward from a support duty to an attack duty. With the attack duty, the deep line forward now closes the goalkeeper down a lot more. This forces the goalkeeper to go much longer with his distribution. This time, the attacker was offside. But if you're a team that is good at defending long balls and have good heading and jumping in the midfield or defence, it may be a way to force the opposition to hand over possession on a regular basis. In this highlight, we can see that the deep line forward with attack duty is still occupying the central defenders in the middle of the box and is still creating the same space near the far post. We're now seeing the deep line forward sitting on the shoulder of the defender much more regularly compared to him dropping deeper in the support role. He also is not marking the defensive midfielder as much, so the opposition seem to have more passing opportunities out of the fence, although he does still close him down when he is in possession. Our deep line forward is still holding up the ball, but it seems as though all of his passes have been backwards. It may be a good idea to ask him to take a few more risks with his passing, but I think it should depend on the deep line forward that is being used as they should have good values in passing, vision and technique. In this highlight, our deep line forward once again occupied the defenders in the middle and created space at the far post for our supporting player. It may be a really good way to get around a defence that is good in the air as they have no chance of getting on the end of our crosses as they're too deep. And that's full time. It was a really good performance by our deep line forward. He was involved in all of our goals through direct play or support play. His rating of 8.6 is not bad considering he isn't natural in that position. We're going to jump back into our analysis now. It's very disappointing that in the second half on the attack duty our deep line forward didn't have a single shot. Even though we can see that his average position in the second half was a lot further forward as indicated by the right hand side image compared with the average position in the first half on the left. Almost every pass in the game that was made by our DLF went backwards. It was this typical hold up gameplay. This could have been caused by us playing with a single lone striker and with a pair of strikers we may have seen a very different story. In conclusion, the deep line forward is a good role 
if you have the right player and the right roles around him. The role can easily get isolated if there's not enough support from the other roles, especially if he's playing as a lone striker. I really like how on support he drops off and unmarked the defensive midfielder as it can really stop the opposition defenders from finding a pass to what is generally going to be the out ball from defence. I don't like that the attack duty seems to push him further up the field and away from the supporting roles as it means the deep line forward needs to hold the ball up more to wait for the other roles to support him. If you're going to use the deep line forward I would recommend playing a more narrow game or play with inverted wingers to make the gaps between the players smaller or finding a deep line forward that has good playmaker attributes so that he can pick passes out. Also, if you're going to use the attack duty, look for a deep line forward that can hold the ball up well, maybe in the style of a traditional target man. And that's going to wrap it up guys. Let me know if you enjoyed this video by leaving a like, a comment and subscribe if you want to see more. Until next time, stay safe and I'll see you soon.